CataractCoach.com. A cataract quiz. How do you fix this dislocated IOL? The single piece of acrylic lens is severely shifted. Now, look carefully. That lens actually has a little eyelet on it. It looks like maybe a B&L and Vista lens. And there's an eyelet there at the haptic optic junction. So could you just pass a suture through that, a belt loop, a Gore-Tex or something, and bring it over? Now, let's take a look what the surgeon's going to do here. This lens looks like it's maybe partially in the bag, but it's severely dislocated. There is some capsular bag support. I like the idea of using viscoelastic to kind of dial it up and see where we are. Perhaps it was partially in the sulcus. That's causing a lot of iris chafing. Now, do you keep this lens or not? That's the question. Now, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that there is some reasonable capsular support there. And what's the least invasive thing? Do you just rip out the lens, rip out the capsule, and just suture to the sclera or do a Yamane? Yeah, maybe there's an alternative method here. So let's see. Surgeon's going to cut this one out. So there goes that lens. Perhaps there was also some sort of refractive error that you can address by an IOL exchange. So there comes the lens. You know, you could have used our twist and out technique, but okay, you cut it in half. I get it. So let's get that out of the eye. We're, we're twisting out. You'd already be done, by the way, and you'd have the lens intact. But <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Let's get the lens up. Here it is. Pull it out of the eye. We've obviously sped up the video here. And now more viscoelastic. Looks like there's no vitreous that's prolapsed. Up oh, three-piece lens going right in. It's so, okay, three-piece lens. There's the leading haptic going out. There's the 7L rule. Looks good in the correct orientation. Dial that in. Is there just enough sulcus support? Or do you need to actually do something additional? Let's take a look. So it looks like here, going to bring the pupil down with a meiotic agent. Okay. And then bring the optic up. Okay, so we're going to suture the haptics to the iris. Now remember, you can definitely fixate a lens by suturing the haptics to the iris. However... You need to have some degree of capsule support. You can't just have the 10O polypropylene holding the haptic to the back of the iris with no capsule support because that's prone to breaking off later. There's too much weight, too much, too much uh, stress on that poor little iris tissue and that poor 10O proline. So here's that 10O proline. This patient has sufficient or reasonable capsule support. So these. Um, sutures to the iris, think of it as like uh, belt and suspenders, just an extra bit of safety there. So here's that 10 proline on that long CIF4 needle and pushing that through. Now make sure you get these good iris bites. Don't get a wimpy bite. Don't also go too close to the pupil margin. You want to go kind of the mid stroma, just about like this. This is very nicely done. And then here are the two suture ends. You can bring those out and tie it up. And how do you do the lens power calculations for this? Well, interestingly, these sutures aren't going to be quite as tight as you think. And that lens can sometimes be effective um, position of the optic in the sulcus, but sometimes it can sit a little farther back in the eye. So in general, as you know, myopia is a gift here. So I'd, if you're debating on whether you lower the lens power, you know, you can keep your original in the bag power. If anything, the patient will have a little bit of a myopic shift as the lens sits a little more anterior, but that's okay. We like myopia. Myopia is a good thing. And so now tying up the suture here, and you can see how it's uh, placed where the habits are now behind the iris and the optics in front of it. That's keeping the optics stable there. And so that's keeping everything in position. And then obviously once these sutures are tied and secured, then you can gently push the optic back behind the iris. Now, that's going to go in pretty nicely. Do you need to have a peripheral iridotomy for these cases? In general, no, but it probably wouldn't hurt to do a small one. And so there you go, pushing the optic behind. And now here's another trick. You can grab with those forceps, yes, and pull the iris centrally. Nice trick. I learned that from Ike Ahmed. You can go inside there and grab that and pull the iris more centrally. And by doing that, that's going to give the pupil a little bit more round shape. So you're not going to be left with an ovoid pupil. So that's the trick that we learned there. Tie this up, and then you're going to finish up the case. So beautiful result here. Hey, while you're still uh, watching this video, let me tell you about our website, cataractcoach.com. I know you love the YouTube channel. I do too. And by the way, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. Come on, do a man a favor here. But also check out the website. We have so much great material. There's a cataract surgery book. It's free. It's a PDF book. You can email to your friends. We've got the curriculum series. You can learn things. We've even got a beautiful podcast. Follow me on social media. Come on, you know the routine. Oh, by the way, the upcoming podcast this week, unbelievable. A surgeon who does more surgery in a week than most American surgeons do in a year. Yeah, no joke. Check it out. Here's the end of the case. 
Beautiful result. Tie those sutures up, cut them off. Let's take the viscoelastic out of the eye and then call this a day. Okay, just flush out the viscoelastic. I just use the IA probe though, but you can just flush it out like you're doing here. You may still have some retained viscoelastic though, but beautiful result. I'm sure this patient was very happy. And now you know how to suture the lens two hours.